so Easter is over. <laughs> that was fast, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it just seems like it was just a, a few hours ago, and, and now it's done. And, and if you had family come for a visit, they've probably gone home again. And, and our interstates are, are crammed with SUVs and, and RVs and Buicks all heading north uh, because people are done with their winter down in Florida or their spring break in Florida. And so now Easter's over, right? That's it. The celebration is done. The message, we can put it away for another year. Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. Someday we will rise again, right? That's, is that really how it works? Is Easter really over? Is it really just one day, one celebration, one message that Jesus rose from the dead and, and will rise again someday? Well, that's not the way Christians have ever seen it. In fact, that's why the Christian church moved the day of worship from the Sabbath Saturday to Sunday, because they wanted to celebrate a little Easter every week on Sundays. And that's also why for the next six weeks I want to spend a little time with you every week on Sunday and, and talk about the blessings that are ours because of Easter and why Easter is so important to us. Today, I want us to look at how Easter brings us peace because Easter gives us victory. And this victory is not just some theoretical thing. It's very personal. It's a part of our day-to-day -day lives. Because of Easter, we've been born again. Because of Easter, we have overcome the world. And because of Easter, we live in love. We see that from the words of the Apostle John in his first epistle, where he writes in the fifth chapter, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And this is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. Hello, this is Pastor Jim Ponko with the Sunday Devotion for April 11th, 2021. You know, a lot of people view Easter as just being sort of a celebration of new birth, a, a celebration of, of new life in the, in the springtime. But it's interesting that the Apostle Paul says that Easter is really about life and death. This is what he says to, his, to the Roman Christians. He writes, We were therefore buried with him, that is with Jesus, through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You see, just as Jesus had to die for our sins and then rise again, at our baptism, our sinful nature died so that a new person could come forth. And that new person believes that Jesus is their Savior. John in our text puts it this way. He says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So this new person, because we have this new person that believes in Jesus, we are born of God. That is, we are now a part of God's family and a part, an heirs of his eternal kingdom. Think about what that means. That because of Easter, we are now royalty. We have an entirely new identity, and most importantly, we are loved by our Heavenly Father. You know, a lot of people struggle to feel loved in life, to feel accepted. And sometimes that happens because maybe they, they grew up in a family where love wasn't expressed, 
or where love only came at a cost, or, or where love was, had to be earned in one way or another. And as a result, for a lot of us, the idea of unconditional love is just a foreign concept. And sometimes Satan tries to convince us that, that God doesn't love us unconditionally either, that somehow we have to earn God's love, that we have to prove that we're worthy of his love. But John points out that God loves us when we've really done nothing except accept his love in faith, believe that Jesus died for us. Now, does God want us to change our behavior? Does he want us to change the way we live our lives? Yes, yes, he does. But he doesn't want us to do that out of fear of punishment or in an attempt to earn his love. He wants us to live our lives in love towards others and in love towards him out of gratitude for the love that he has already shown us. John says, this is love for God, to keep his commandments. Now, God's commandments are, are really quite simple. They can be broken down into two phrases, love God and love your neighbor. And that's how God wants us to respond to his love for us. He wants us to love him back. He wants us to love our fellow Christian as well. John says something interesting, though. He says that this obedience to God's commands is, are not burdensome. Sometimes people think that, that God's commands are burdensome. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who won't have anything to do with Christianity because they don't like the rules. So how can John say that the commandments aren't burdensome? Well, for the same reason that a man who falls in love with a woman will change his behavior for her. He doesn't mind making changes in his life because he knows it'll make her happy. And in the same way, Christians, out of love for their Lord, don't find it hard to make changes in their life because they know that their Lord, their Father, loves them. But John gives us another reason that God's children um, uh, can understand and see and feel a blessing in baptism, and that, or in, in Easter, and that is that we have overcome the world. Uh, John puts it this way, everyone born of God overcomes the world. It doesn't seem that way, does it? I mean that we've overcome the world. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed by the world. There's, there's so much trouble, there's persecution, there's disappointment and sadness. They're all a part of our lives. But let's remember something about the difficulties of life. And that is that those difficulties can't, can't take away what Jesus won for us on the cross and at Easter. Troubles are only temporary. But God's love is eternal. However, John does point out that there is something that can take away God's love. Um, in, earlier in his letter, he puts it this way. Everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, those are the things that can take away God's love. Why? Because they can destroy our relationship, the one that we have with God. You see, those are the things that the world says that we're supposed to pursue. The world says, do what makes you happy. Live for today. Don't worry about what's coming. Don't worry about God. Follow your heart. But the closer we grow to God, the more we understand the joy and the peace that we have because of Jesus, the more we realize that God is present with us all the time, that his love for us is real and constant, and that he's blessing us every day, the less appealing the pleasures of this earth seem to be. That's how Easter enables us to overcome, to have already overcome the world. 
each day that we remind ourselves of who we are because of Jesus and we think of who our Father is, His glory, His love, His compassion, and His presence, we find ourselves wanting nothing else that the world has to offer. And that, by the way, is why Christians are encouraged to spend time every day in God's Word. That's why we're encouraged to take time to talk to God in prayer and, and to take time every day to thank God for the blessings that He gives us. Because in those things, we come to see more and more His glory, more and more how we delight in being with Him above all. But John says that Easter is not only something that leads us to love God. It also leads us to love one another. He puts it this way. He says, everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. You know, maybe you've never thought of it this way, but Easter, in one sense, is about security. That is, Easter makes us more secure in our Father's love. Easter, first of all, proves how much God loves us. John earlier in his letter said, this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Because we are God's children, secure in our Father's love, we have no reason to obsess about our wants and our desires and our goals in life. We know that our Heavenly Father will take care of them because He loves us. We have no reason to worthy, worry or become overly concerned about them. And you know what that means? Just as, as the person who, um, who understands that he does his job and, and he can go home every night, has more time with his family, we who are secure in our Heavenly Father's love have more time for our spiritual family to enjoy those family ties, our brothers and sisters in Christ, to encourage them and to pray for them and, and to stay connected to them. After all, God has made us a family. He's given us new birth together. God's people all have the same Father who loves them dearly and loves each one of them as much as the other. But that leads us to wonder, how do you think our Heavenly Father reacts when He sees His family ignoring each other? I've got to ask you an honest question. How many of the people that you join together with worship on a regular basis do you know by name? And if you don't know their name, why haven't you introduced yourself so that you could know their name and learn who they were and, and what they were all about? If they stopped worshiping, would you notice? And even if you did notice, would you know their name? Would you know how to contact them and make sure that they're all right and everything is okay? After all, we are the family of God. God loves each of us dearly. Each of us is important to Him. And that includes our brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope that today you've already started to see that Easter, yes, is about the resurrection and the promise of eternal life that we have with Him. But it's about so much more. Easter means that we can live as winners that we live with a new life, that we live already having overcome the world, that we live with a great family to love who loves us. For the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Send us your Holy Spirit that we may believe without seeing and help us to accept the peace that comes from knowing Jesus 
as your son. Help us to share this peace with others by extending to them your forgiveness. As you sent your son to redeem us, so may we willingly go wherever you send us. May others see in us the joy which comes from knowing the resurrected Lord. Make us agents of your joy and peace in this world, a world that is so often filled with sorrow and strife. May our faith in your Son give us the victory that overcomes the world. We pray in Jesus' name the prayer he taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.